Hey everybody, in this video we're going to just show how you can trigger different sequences with different colliders in Unreal Engine. This is in response to a question I had gotten from a previous tutorial where I showed how you could run a sequence with a keystroke. In this case, the question was, can we run different sequences in response to collision events with different colliders? So the idea is that one collider would trigger one sequence, a different collider would a different sequence. So how do, how do we do that? So here's my little setup. Uh, there's two colliders and if you were ever going to add a collider you just click the add button and type in trigger and uh, you can choose trigger box. So that's what these two are and those are trigger boxes. I've added a standard sphere and a standard cube and in my uh, content browser I created two different sequences. One for the sphere and one for the square. So if I double click on the sphere and play that the sphere bounces and if I double click and open up the square and play that, well, then the square bounces. Okay, so those are my two different sequences in my content browser. Now, correspondingly, I set up two different sequence player actors in the level. So if I, again, uh, if I go to the add to the project and I type in SEQ, I should have a level sequence actor that would add a level sequence actor to the level. Deleting that old one. And I have this one called sequence sphere and this one is called sequence square and the sequence square has a level asset already pre-configured as square sequence and uh, this actor for the sphere also has the asset for the sphere sequence uh, selected so that's the overall setup how do we uh, put all of this to use well we go into the level sequence so going up to my uh, button here for a level sequence and in the level sequence what i want to do is add an event for this first trigger here so this trigger box is selected and i right click and i see add event for trigger box zero and it's going to be a collision on actor begin overlap and then i'm going to take the sphere sequence actor. I'm going to uh, drag that into my level sequence. And from this, I'm going to say play. And I think you get the idea here. We connect this and we're good to go. Oops, I didn't do the right thing there. Okay. And let's repeat this for our other trigger box. So select the trigger box, right click, adding an event for that on begin overlap. And I'll take my square sequence actor, drag that in and pull off a play function for that and connect that to the trigger. So we're all set, compile, save, close, and here's our player pawn. So all we need to do is move the player pawn forward and it should pass through these triggers and trigger the different sequences. So I'm hitting play, uh, click in the viewport so that takes effect. And I'm just gonna use the W key to move forward. And so I should trigger the sphere. And if I move forward, I should trigger the square. So that's two different sequences being triggered. And also if I go backwards, I should trigger them one after the other, hopefully. Yeah, there it is. I wonder if, can I do them one after another in sequence? So here we go. Do, do, yep. So they can run at the same time. However, um, you might've noticed that the uh, sequence will only play uh, in the actor after any previous run has already finished. So uh, if I play this again, right? And uh, if I go into that sphere trigger, I can't trigger it again until that sequence is finished. And then once it is, I can trigger it again. So hope this helps. Until next time, have fun.